welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial at the channel of the World of Building Design. Uh, my name is Babak, your host. Uh, so in this tutorial, uh, I would like to talk with you about the building uh, heating load and cooling load. So how we have to have uh, this calculated in the carrier hat. So uh, in order to do that, you have to define your building envelope or your space envelope material you have to define their area uh, and also uh, you know the type of membrane that builds those material so in this tutorial we're going to go into the carrier hat and just have a look at how carrier um, you know um, organize this data and how you have to uh, import your building material membrane into your uh, space properties and and also determine the quantity of this uh, you know this components if you have windows or doors or uh, walls how you have to determine the area and uh, add that to your spaces so that um, you know um, more accurate information about your space um, you know um, you know heat uh, you know heating property could be could be created so um, if you haven't done this in the carrier app and you would like to, to see how we can uh, learn about that, please continue watching this video and we go into the, into the software in a moment to, to, to review that. And please also don't forget to subscribe in this channel and press on the notification and the like button if you want me to, to have this type of tutorials. Uh, you know, uh, to be continued. I, I, I would like to create a lot of more other HVAC uh, design related, um, you know, uh, videos and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you Carrier Hub environment. Now that we are in the Carrier Hub um, working environment, I would like to show you the uh, space internal load. And now we want to look at the uh, some of the options that we have for uh, filling the information about the windows, about the uh, pretty much building envelope. So I'm going to open the space command. And under space command, as you remember, we had one default space we created. So in the default space, we looked at the internal uh, heat gain already. And now we want to go into the tab called wall, window, and doors. In this tab, pretty much you should have already built the library of your uh, walls, roofs, windows, and doors, as well as your shape, so that you can plug in into this page. Uh, I will look into the um, how to build the uh, information about the building envelope in the next tutorial, but in this tutorial, I'm going to just show you how those information are plugged in here. So basically, uh, in here, um, the exposure is that uh, you have to determine the, um, the orientation of your space on which orientation is located. It can be either north, it can be uh, north, northeast, northeast, um, east, northeast. So it's a different uh, type of orientation is showing up here that you have to select. Um, so if, if your space is located like angular toward northeast, you may want to pick up the northeast option. Uh, for this, I'm going to just check the north as one of the direction. So remember that when you select any of the exposure uh, orientation or direction, you're putting all of your surface area of your wall in form of uh, uh, in form of uh, square feet because this is uh, set for imperial unit and also you put the quantity of the window in that space in the north orientation we will get to the we'll get to the windows in a second but in here you have to input the quantity of your windows that you already defined and if you have multiple type of windows uh, that are not the same size or it doesn't have the same properties you may want to use a window type 2 uh, for this purpose. Sometimes you might have even more type of windows on the same north orientation. In that case, perhaps you need to create another north um, you know, um, line in here. 
So for here, we're just uh, assuming that uh, we have a limited number of window type or wall type. So, so as I said, you put the quantity of your windows and same with the doors. And uh, when you put the quantity, then uh, you have to select the type of window uh, that you have selected from this menu in here. If you have put, for example, this is all tentative, right? If you have put the uh, square footage of your wall is a thousand, um, a thousand uh, square feet for your window, if you have, say, 10 window in this orientation, say, two windows in this orientation, north, then window type number one, you have to select from here, window type number one. You come and you select that type of window to attribute that type of window to this quantity. In here, as you see, there is no window already defined, so we don't have anything to select from, uh, but that's the idea and how this works uh, for the selection. Same thing applies with the shading. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have a special type of shading in this orientation, you select from the drop-down menu. Um, same thing with the doors. So that's pretty much depending on the on the exposure of your space. Uh, that if you have, for example, a room that has north and uh, say um, east exposure, you select all the area of your wall in that north exposure and uh, other other component of the building envelope in that exposure, and then you go to east and input all of the data related to the east exposure, which is the um, area of the wall in the east exposure, windows and doors. Uh, remember that always you put the maximum or the total area of the wall, including the doors and windows in it. And you don't extract anything from the windows or door uh, area. You just input the total and once you I'm going to put a number here. Once you put the, the windows and door, uh, you know, quantity, depending on the size of those windows and doors, those information is extracted from the windows already. So you don't need to apply the, the net value of the wall, uh, wall area in here. As you see, this is a wall growth area, including all other elements within it. So that's pretty much it, how you determine the exposure side of your space and determining all the building envelope uh, requirement in here. So, but remember that we have to first build a library of all type of windows, doors, walls that we have in a building uh, or for any space that we are doing this calculation for so that we can select from this drop down menu. And as I said, this tab is exclusively for your uh, space identified uh, building envelope um, component. And as you know, the idea in here is to, to calculate the, is to calculate the, um, you know, conduction uh, heat rate, uh, which is the, you know, based on that equation, very famous equation of uh, the area multiplied by um, rate of heat transfer coefficient of heat transfer or U value multiplied by your uh, temperature difference. So that's the idea of uh, inputting this data in here. So uh, we'll do the example on how we have to input this for a, for a more realistic uh, example, but just I wanted to show you this tab uh, and how this data is entered. Uh, so I'm gonna exit from here just to, to show you how we have to work with this, this tab. So as you can see on the left-hand side, um, we have the library of walls, roofs, windows, doors, and shade, which we need to build for, for this project. So if you, you, can, you can create a new system either by right-clicking on, for example, wall and create a new, or you go on the top here, right-click, actually double-click on this and open this, this new box where you create your uh, wall membrane. So HAP Carrier has a full database of uh, different type of membrane. Uh, 
Uh, and depending on the membrane that you select, you can get, uh, you know, you can get different um, uh, a specific heat R value for that wall membrane. And the minimum number of members within a wall is three because you have to determine the inside surface of your wall inside the building site and outside surface where it's the, the membrane that faces outside of the building. And then in the middle, uh, you can have uh, whatever number of membrane depends on your uh, building envelope assembly that you can uh, that you can either select from the drop down menu in here to select or to um, make adjustment to this because you can do always some form of adjustment um, by uh, changing the value of the thickness of the membrane you have and uh, if you have the that the data from the manufacturer you can input the data in here the other information is related to the absorption factor of any membrane that we, we select. Uh, always it's recommended to use dark color because uh, it shows the higher absorption rate, meaning that the higher um, uh, radiant heat transfer into the building and it can, uh, it can help you when you design or you calculate the thermal load in a building, you are gonna be a lot more um, you know, uh, conservative with your selection. So unless you exactly know uh, the specification of your uh, wall membrane or your exterior membrane, where you want to determine the absorb absorption rate in here from, you know, if if you go with, the, for example, if you do this assembly for, um, for the roof, you can do that uh, based on the manufacturer, uh, manufactured database or recommendation specification for here, but it's always recommended to use, uh, you know, the dark surface for exterior because eventually buildings over time, um, you know, uh, exterior of the building gets darker and darker. So your absorption rate increases over time. So, uh, so that's one of the recommendation. And as far as this uh, membrane of interior within your wall concerns, you can, again, delete any of this membrane or add to it. It's very simple. As you see this uh, blinking uh, arrow, by right-clicking on this, you have two options of inserting a new line or a new uh, line item where you can add the characteristic of a new membrane into your wall, or you can remove that. For example, if I press um, insert, you see that as a new layer is created within this wall. I can go into the drop-down menu and add any of this uh, spaces if, if applies. So you have to look at the architectural floor plan and see what architect has, uh, you know, has determined, has assigned uh, as a membrane for wall, and then build that a specific um, type of uh, membrane for your wall. And then eventually you can always name your wall based on your wall type. If this is a wall type dash number two, you can build that, customize it. Once you save it, I'm gonna go with OK. Let's, because this is a new layer we created, we have to definitely, as a minimum, create a thickness for it and uh, create a, you know, create a, like an R value for it. For now, I'm gonna just delete this because I don't have any anything to add. I'm gonna remove that, keep it as it is. Just keep the name of wall type number two and then Press OK. So what's going to happen is that under wall, I'm going to go to roof. You see there's nothing for the roof created. For the wall, I have created a new wall type number two, right? By double clicking, I can go back to this characteristic and make any modification or any change. Don't forget that the information here all are adjustable. And basically, it reflects the thickness of that membrane, density, uh, a specific heat rate of transfer and uh, a specific heat basically and the R value. And then overall, the total wall membrane R value is determined here as 4.45, 44. And then reverse of that number, as you know, is the equation of the U value. You get the U value by reversing the R value and dividing. So you get the U overall U value and that's the characteristic of your 
wall. Now, if I go back to my space and open the space that I had, I can come into my wall, window doors. I'm going to go and select my north elevation. I'm going to go and say that there is a thousand square feet of that wall type. And then, as you see, automatically, the wall type number two is right showing in here. If I come to this drop down menu, you see that we have already created a wall type number two. So you can have many wall types in here and, and select and use whatever is applicable to that orientation. Another thing I can do, I can just go, go back. Um, you can go, you can go and uh, what you can do is as opposed to, as opposed to going here and selecting your wall type, you can double click on your wall type right here. It takes you to that wall library. If you need to create a new wall type, you can go and create. So these are interconnected between the space property and then wall library. That's pretty much applying to all other, um, you know, other areas of the library where for your building envelope, you have roof, definitely you have um, windows, uh, doors and shading also. I'm going to go more uh, through this uh, different items and building different uh, membering um, and the information for all of these other areas in the next tutorial. Um, thank you very much. We looked at the um, space properties and in the area of the space property where you could define your walls, uh, doors and windows and pretty much your building envelope uh, components and bring into your space calculation uh, for heat transfer. It means that you had, uh, you had to create different libraries of your building envelope uh, uh, to understand the U value of all of the, those building envelope elements in your space and how they contribute to the heat gain or heat loss of your uh, space properties. And uh, so in the next tutorial, we are going to continue with uh, looking at the uh, building envelope library for other components of the building, such as building roof, uh, building doors and windows and see what kind of uh, other information you need to input to build those uh, to build those into into your space. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please uh, press on the like button if you like this kind of tutorial, and uh, press on the subscription button. And I will see you in the next tutorial.